Yeah, this is the uh, battery, my El Camino. Now, this is an older battery, but it was fine the whole, all these years. And all of a sudden, when I put it in this car, it died. So I started thinking, uh-oh, parasitic draw someplace. Because I had another battery in here, and all of a sudden it died. Now, I was aware of a slight parasitic draw. Uh, well, I'll show you how to connect. You do that. What it is, you disconnect your ground, and you set your uh, meter to amps um, DC, amps DC, and then what you do is, with the ground off the car, you take this, you put the, you know, the probe on here, and uh, the other side, and let's see, well, you will be able to observe the meter. Oh, excuse me, that's set on volts. That was set on what the deal is here. I gotta I gotta change this. Excuse me. There's uh you gotta move this over right here. Right here. You gotta move that over. You gotta change the ports on the meter, the little uh connectors. And There it is. It's right there. I just had it on volts. I was checking the volts before. But anyway, so it's down to zero. Uh, checking the amps. So again, put the positive on there and the negative grounded out. And you notice. So I'm grounding it right here. See. So I'll put this positive back on here. It's showing like one hundredth of an amp. Now that's a really small parasitic draw. It's not too bad. That's a little. That's above specifications for what you really want. But you know, if you have this thing sitting here several months, that'll kill your battery. That'll kill your battery, man. So, and uh, just to show you, like, um, well, let's go back. I'll turn the headlights on. I'll show you what I'm talking about. Now they're not going to go on. Until I make the battery connect with a ground, you can see what kind of amperage it's drawing. So, okay, so I flipped the headlight switch on, so I got to make the battery ground out to make the lights work, and we'll see what kind of draw the headlights would be pulling on here. Watching the gauge makes a connection. If you can see that, You'll probably see it now. There you go. So it's drawing like I don't know. That's probably with a low battery too, about five amps. So it's screwed up. It's well, it's just not. It's not like totally um, messed up in the fact that it's drawing too much of a parasitic draw. But the headlights should have been drawing more than five amps because. Um, well, let me put it this way. That's uh, it's a low battery. It's a low battery. So. I was trying to bring this thing. I was curious about trying to bring it back to life. You know, I might. I'm going to actually probably. If I can't bring this back to life, I'm going to try to do the loom battery th thing with this. This was a deep cycle battery, and I'm realizing that the other battery got killed because of a slight parasitic draw. So, checking this again for voltage, just resting voltage. Let's see. Yeah, you can see it dropped quite a bit. It dropped quite a bit. So, you know, it's a resting voltage. It should be around 12.7 um, volts. And it'll start the car if it's got about 12.1 or even 12. But if it starts getting below that, forget about it. So, I used the uh, load tester on it. And it was all the way, it was going all the way down to here. And you know, I load tested this battery, and I check it every once in a while, every six months or so, and it was out of the car. It was always on. It was always good. It was way up here in the green. It was really good. So I'm thinking there's something, just a really slight parasitic draw, but it's like if I let this car sit for a week, no problem, because you're talking a hundredth of an amp. But what I was trying to do is bring it back with this battery charger, and this is a ship to shore. It's not too bad. Like in other words, if you uh, 
you know, I'll put it on here in a second. I'll show you what the hell I'm talking about. So, just connect it up and it shows you the volts. You know, this is like, yeah, you know, that, that 12, 12 or 12.1, you usually start the car. But this does not handle, the load tester does not work with this. It's lousy under load. So, um, I charged it up a couple times, bring it all the way up. And this thing, if like, say you try to bring it up to fast charge, it goes into desulfation mode, actually. It'll actually start blinking. And, um, see right there. But it did not bring it back. So, what I'm going to do is not use this thing. I'm going to go ahead and use a manual charger on it and actually observe this, the, uh, you know, just for the bubbles in here. And just leave the manual charger on here. But I got another gizmo I'm going to be getting because if I replace this battery, um, like for instance, I have this new battery here. Now the other one was fine. It, it, it couldn't have, like two batteries in a row couldn't have screwed up like that. So this is a brand new battery. What I have it on is a uh, Schumann float charger. But I also have a battery minder, uh, which I have on my Jeep. And it, it does like a pulsing sulfate, desulfation mode. I'm actually going to get their highest quality battery, battery minder and see if I can bring back that deep cycle battery all the way. If, I, if it doesn't work, I'll replace it, but um, I'm just curious about trying to bring it back. But first, before I do that, I'm going to charge it up with the manual charger, the old school way. Now this is strictly a manual charger, so it's not going to do any of that electronic garbage where it's going to start going into float mode. It's going to, if it goes up to 12.7 volts or 12.8 volts, like it's fully charged, it's going to keep putting a charge on it. Now, since the battery's bad anyway, uh, I don't care. But um, if I can't bring this thing back, I'm going to experiment. I'm actually going to get it after this thing um, gets uh, charged up with this. I'm going to put the battery minder on it. I'm actually going to pick up a high quality one right now. Or maybe the standard quality one depends on what the hell the difference is, and see if that desulfation mode works. Um, because what I'm realizing is there is a very slight parasitic draw. Like this gauge showed when we're looking at it, it was a hundredth of an amp. So after four days, it takes an amp. So after ten days, it takes. Uh, what the heck? Well, well, after four days, it takes an amp. After 40 days, it takes 10 amps. So if you got it for a few months, you, it plus with the hot weather, you're probably draining it all the way pretty much to zero. So I, I didn't really start this up in a few months, and uh, probably a little more than that, and uh, that was enough to do it. Now, that parasitic draw is maybe about double tolerance. You want to have it at... Um, no more than 50 milliamps, so that's doing about 100 milliamps. You usually want to have it no more than 50 milliamps. It's about 100 milliamps, but that's still not bad because if you let the car sit a week, it's really not going to make much of a difference. But if you let it sit a while, it'll kill the battery. So I'm not going to actually go around and try to find what the parasitic draw is. It could be anything. It could be something in the alternator for all I know. but. It's not too bad, but I should have kept a, um, and probably what the deal was, I used to keep this thing charged up all the time, and I didn't do it. And um, that was enough to kill it. So what I'm going to do in the future, though, is I'm going to actually keep that uh, ground terminal off of here because there's no parasitic draw going on at all. But I'm going to run this experiment with, I already tried charging it up several times with the, um, the other charger. The one that was uh, the shift to shore electronic charger. I tried charging it up with that Schumann charger. I have another battery minder. I'm probably going to get a brand new one. But I'm going to try to overcharge it with this. Not extremely so, but you've realized it's only putting out about, you know, two amps or something. It's not going to be really cooking it too bad. I got the, uh, you know, this off the, uh, it's vented well. And, um, it may it may bring it back i'm curious i'm curious so you know we'll see how this works out i'm going to run this experiment and if it doesn't work out and i can't bring it back 
I'm going to try to make this into one of those loom batteries like I tried on the other battery that failed. If it gets really screwed up really bad, it don't work. It don't work, man. It just doesn't work. But um, I'm realizing if you got a car sitting around, you know, I used to keep the battery trickle charger on this thing all the time. Never had a problem. It does have a very, like again, I'll give you the specifications. You want, um, for a parasitic draw, actually you want to have no more than 50 milliamps which is um, a half of a hundredth of an amp. This is given about a hundred, hundredth of an amp. That's still not too bad. If you're just driving a car, like if you're using it every week, you wouldn't have a problem, but you know, if you let it sit a few months, that's enough to kill the battery. Well, I got out my little battery minder. It's, uh, this is the original one. I got it from about 10 years ago. And, uh, you know, I got the Jeep running now, and I got, uh, I keep the charger on that, and I used to keep it on this thing, so I guess this thing, it's got a really slight draw, like I said, but I went down to Wally World, Walmart, and, uh, try to find something like this, and actually the one they got that looks like this is not the same thing. This actually, the original one's got the desulfation mode, like if I press this button here, see that, it goes in desulfation mode and the, the blinking green light the new ones they got they cost more money to have this was actually expensive when i first got it. it was the only version so i'm going to put it back on when it fully charges what happens is i'm going to put now like reconnected when it fully charges this goes into desulfation mode now this one doesn't seem to be as bad as the other one i had killed in this thing this was a, this is a deep cycle battery i'm going to try to bring it back but if it, I have any doubts that it's not going to start the car, I'm going to change it and uh, put put something else in it. I will load test it, uh, like I showed with the load tester. But what I'm going to do is actually I tried using the battery tender. To, I used the uh, the ship to shore thing, and um, you know uh, I tried I tried discharging the battery a couple times by loading it down and recharging it and did some cycles still didn't come back it still didn't come back wouldn't take a load so I'm gonna try this thing out I don't think this is gonna work but what I'm gonna get is I'm gonna get some high-tech stuff by these P same people battery minder and um, it may work better than the original one and um, give it a try and uh, so this is gonna take probably a few weeks or so to really test this out but I'm very curious to get this thing back to normal again and if it doesn't come back to normal I'm going to try to um, do the same deal with the loom battery deal. I, I failed with that experiment, but uh, this might not be so screwed up that it, it might work, it, which is a loom solution. But, um, you know, I got, four, I got four vehicles. I got the El Camino, the Jeep. I got the compressed natural gas Chevy, the Sebring convertible, the Harley, and I actually got a battery on the um, uh, diesel uh, generator. So... You know, I got a lot of batteries that I got to be, so I was had this, I had this, I used to keep this on a car, I kept it on a Jeep, I kept it off the car, and it's been killing the battery, so because I've been using a Jeep. But, um, I think there's a way to get this back, and um, I'm going to get an, a very high, Wally World didn't have it, um, I'm going to get a high-tech version of this damn thing, and uh, the latest one, and see if it works out. I'm curious, I have a tendency to think it might, might really work, because this actually was a deep cycle battery.